to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a slash 31 mask between two point to point links. So you're probably wondering, why would I ever use a slash 31? Or you might be saying, well, I didn't think that was possible. Well, I didn't think it was possible until about a week ago when someone showed me how to do it. And uh, actually, it is indeed possible, and in many ways, you might want to use a slash 31 mask for point-to-point -point links. Sort of depends on your policy and I guess your comfort level in doing this. So we have GNS3 open, up and running. I'm going to drag in two routers. Doesn't really matter which ones. Drag in that, router one and router two. I'm going to connect it up, fast zero zero to fast zero zero, and I'm going to fire it up. And open up my console windows right there. Okay, so while that's loading up, I'm going to drag in Notepad and just show you what I'm talking about. So what we want to do is a slash 31. Now, in previous uh, studies, what you might have learned is for point-to-point -point links, you probably want to use a slash 30. Slash 30 is a 255-255-255-252 mask, right? So 252 mask gives you four IP addresses but you can actually only use two because one of those addresses is the network address and one of those is a broadcast address. So for example, if we were using 192.168.100 as the network portion of the address or the main network portion of the address, it's, this is a class C private address, we would do something like dot one for one side and 192.168.100.2 for the other side. The dot zero is the network address and the dot three is the broadcast address. Well, in a point-to-point -point link, having a network address and the broadcast address is kind of silly when you think about it because there's only two points. So, okay, we go with a slash 31 and what's the mask for that? Well, it's 255, 255, 255, 2, Five, four. It's kind of kind of weird to type in, isn't it? It's two five four. It's very strange. And we go down here in one nine two, one six eight. Well, let's see. What are we going to use here? Well, we could use. We could try a one hundred dot zero and a one hundred dot one. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see if it works. So let's go into our routers and give it a shot. So we've got router one. Let me just switch this over here. And let's see if this is going to work. I'm just going to drag my console window up there. Enable conf-t hostname r1 int fat00 and give it an IP address of 192.168.100.0 zero. I'm going to have to give it a mask of 255.255.255.254. Kind of weird to type in. It says, gives us a warning. Nice little warning. Use a slash 31 on non-point-to-point -point links cautiously. Okay. And we'll do a, a no shut on that one. Go over to my second router, R2. Enable conf-t hostname r2 interface fast 00 IP address 192.168.100.1 Whoops, it's uh, the muscle memory creeping up on me. So all two five fives and a two five four at the end. Same warning, we do a no shut. And now the real test is, can we ping from one side to the other? So ping, whoops, 192, I'll just cancel out that, ping, 192.168.100.0, which is the IP address on the other side. And we have a success. Hey, how about that? Let's go to R1.
192.168.100.1. We have a success there. Let's see how the show IP int br looks. Pretty much looks the same, although it's kind of creepy to see 192.168.100.0. Um, so why would you ever use a slash 31? Would you definitely save a lot of IP addresses because now you could just use two addresses for each pair of point-to-point -point links instead of wasting four addresses. So it's pretty nice. Well, okay, that's kind of like half the battle. We can ping, but do our routing protocols work? Well, let's see here. We go to CompT. Let's fire up, uh, let's fire up OSPF. How about that? We'll do router OSPF1 and do the crazy network statement of four zeros and four two five fives area zero. Go to router two, conf t, router OSPF one, network four zeros, four two five fives, and a area zero. Let's see if we have an adjacency forming up. We should because it's multicast and it's not actually broadcast, shouldn't affect anything. And while we're there, we might as well add a loopback to both of our routers. So we'll do interface loopback zero and do an IP address of all twos for router two. And we'll make it a slash 32. We'll go into R1, in loopback zero. Give the IP address of all ones and make that a slash 32. Exit out of there. Do a show IP protocols just to make sure our OSPF is running. And looks like it's running. Show IP OSPF neighbor. And we have a full and DR. So OSPF is talking to each other. So it's pretty nice. Okay, you're probably wondering, okay, what if I ping, how would I actually ping the broadcast address? Well, you really wouldn't, but uh, I guess you could do, you could do something like that. Let's see if that works. Taking a while. Okay, looks like we got a request from the other side, so that works. All right, so we're definitely getting requests from the other side. Seems to work. It's not a problem. So there you go, a slash 31. Pretty easy to do. You just have to remember it's uh, 255, 255, 255, 254. Because your muscle memory is probably going to type in 252. So watch out for that. And it allows you to use IP addresses and you waste a lot less. So you, you have a point-to-point -point link. You only need two IP addresses. Well, you're going to use two IP addresses versus a slash 30, which will use four IP addresses, meaning that you're going to be wasting two of them. So there you go, a slash 31. This has been another Router Gods video. Thanks for watching.